Uh, Jerry, uh, welcome to the program. I'm glad you didn't drive in to see us today. How are you doing after the wee fender bender last week? Uh, I'm doing fine, thanks, Sean. No worries. It's I just, can't uh, help but feel somewhat no, responsible for that. Uh, no, no, look, I'm not going to make you responsible. I was behind the wheel and um, I've got to take responsibility for that. Oh, are you in trouble? Uh, is there going to be charges or no. was it a... No, no, I didn't mean it like that. I mean, oh, okay, if, good. Um, can't blame other people for things that happen. All right, and you're okay? No major injuries or, or anything? Uh, no, no, just uh, dented pride, I suppose. All right, and we we all have to suffer that as we go on. Let's talk Russia and Ukraine then. Uh, firstly, just these latest developments. Got to be concerning for anyone in the world when an ally and a supporter of Putin says, hey, let's roll out those battlefield nukes. Oh, yes, I think so. And um, Vladimir Putin has made that threat himself. I think the thing that is most worrying is the Russians uh, have always been thought to have a pretty formidable military, uh, a very big military and a very capable military. Uh, that's clearly not the case. Uh, and when you're seeing, you know, 300,000 conscripts being uh, called up uh, and then uh, apparently sent to the front line without a much training, then you, you know that the situation from their perspective is getting a bit desperate. Uh, remember that this guy, uh, Putin, invaded this country. It's his war, no one else's. And uh, he is not going to want to lose that uh, with, with any degree of um, uh, acrimony that would come from it. And, you know, you look at all that stuff over the weekend where, you know, he's proclaiming how wonderful this completely sham uh, referendum was. I mean, anybody's going to vote the way they're told to at the point of a gun. And uh, then that uh, group of people coming into the, the big hall where he had the uh, uh, the big rah-rah, the big 30-minute speech, the rally outside, which appeared to be mainly government servants bust in. Very unenthusiastic flag-waving, I've got to say, is mm. an interesting uh, aspect of it. Uh, and the fact that the Chechen warlord was just sitting somewhere in the middle tells you what that crowd was all about. Uh, in the actual formal speech itself. So there's a desperation, I think, from Putin's end. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I think the nuclear threat is is terrifying. Mm. We have signed up to economic uh, sanctions and imposed them, but we still have an embassy up in Messines Road in, in, in Karori and a Russian ambassador here. Would us sending the Russian ambassador home send any sort of signal? Um, should we do that or not, Jerry? Well, I think we should. I'll start there. Would it send a signal? Um, I doubt that Mr Putin would shake in his boots because New Zealand sent the uh, ambassador home. Uh, but remember, that we're part of, uh, um, a, a, I suppose, a group of countries in the world that have a particular way of viewing freedom. Uh, and we also proclaim that we have an independent foreign policy. Uh, so saying that, well, no one else has sent their ambassadors home, so we should, I think, kind of... Uh, flies in the face of that. My own view is that uh, it would be for us quite a statement uh, and one that's worth making. All right, we've got an ambassador in Russia. We'd have to bring them home too, or that'd be the tip for tat? Oh, they, they, they should be called home anyway. I mean, I think uh, that the argument that you're there for New Zealanders in Russia who might get in trouble is pretty thin now. Anyone who is there is going to be well aware of how volatile the situation is, and it's going to make uh, arrangements or, or decisions about their own safety. Uh, what is our trade like with Russia? How much do we hurt when we cut themselves off from them? Well, I think the first point would be that if you are um, going to determine it all on the basis of trade, then you know that, that's not a very good starting point. Uh, but we have very, very low trade with uh, Russia. Some years ago, we were on the brink of getting a free trade agreement with Russia, uh, but then they uh, invaded and annexed the, Ukra uh, the Crimea, and so we pulled out of those arrangements, and uh, we were literally days off site in that arrangement. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, it seems that we can sort of stop things uh, when we see things like that. Here we've got a much bigger conflict a uh, much worse conflict and uh, one that threatens the stability of, of not only Europe but the whole world and is having an effect on economies throughout the world, including our own, 
And I think we should make a statement that we don't like this, we don't want it to continue. The, the odd thing is that the government's already said that they're not talking to Russian diplomats. So what's the so point of having the them here? Yeah. yeah. Um, That's right. Um, how can you keep pushing on this issue? Uh, and can you? Or all you can do is say, I think we should send the ambassador home and hope for some sort of meaningful response from the government. Well, the government will be well aware of what our position is, uh, but they make decisions on behalf of New Zealand because they're the elected uh, government, uh, and we'll just keep on state, uh, stating our position uh, with every opportunity we get. Uh, this morning is obviously one of them. Yeah. Uh, Jerry, I thank you very, very much indeed for your time and your, your perspective uh, on uh, this issue. Uh, could I just say in general terms, do you believe in the end from what we're seeing um, that the Ukrainians will prevail, that this could be the end of Putin? How do you think it might game out? Um, I think there's two things to look at. One is um, where Putin sits with the Russian people at the moment. Uh, while we see some indication that there's a dissatisfaction with the way the war's going. We're seeing some protests. You've got to remember that their population is around about 150 to 180 million. I'm not quite sure of the actual number there, but uh, the numbers who are protesting are very small. They are, you know, subject to significant media blackout. We're probably seeing more of uh, what's going on than anybody inside Russia. Uh, so I don't know that that's going to be a problem. I think around his own circle, uh, that hall full of people, apart from the Chechen warlord, didn't look all that enthusiastic about what's going on. Uh, so that could be a problem for him. Can the uh, Ukraine military succeed, not without the help of, of uh, countries uh, like the US, uh, like Britain, who's doing an amazing job, and with all of the NATO bloc countries as well, including uh, the small contribution uh, but appropriate contribution that New Zealand is making. Mm. Jerry, once again, I thank you for your time, and I'm glad you didn't drive into the studio uh, this morning because you're down in Christchurch. That is Jerry Brownlee, the National Party's um, uh, foreign affairs uh, spokesperson. He says, yep, if we're not talking to the ambassador, he should go home, and it would send a signal and a strong signal. No one else has sent their ambassador home. So what? We're independent. We're an independent country. I say, and nothing personal against you, Ambassador, on your bike ski.